Today, we're going to talk about some of the most expensive rifles in the world and what makes them so expensive. I'm Jake. I'm John. And we're here at the Gunsmith Show today talking about quite possibly some of the largest, most expensive guns you'll ever hear of. You know, when we went to the uh, NRA museums this past year, yes, we you caught a whole bunch of them out at... Uh, Cody, Wyoming. Now that there wasn't an, some. Is that an NRA museum? That's nothing to do with the NRA. But it is quite that's, a that's museum. That's part of the Smithsonian Museum. Okay, group. I knew it was something different. I didn't remember what it was because I wasn't allowed to go on that trip with you. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's did. okay. But we did go to down to Springfield, Missouri, and uh, some of the rifles there from a collection that you're going to hear about soon were quite amazing. Yep. And uh, why don't you lead us in, Jake? All right. Well, we're going to start talking about the Holland and Holland Company of England. H&H, as you might hear them. They've got many different calibers with their names on them. Uh, and they actually, their company dates back, dates, dates back all the way till 1835. Wow. And H&H actually has more patents in its name than any other British gun maker. Well, it's the only one you hear about a lot. Right. You know, you, I mean, you hear H&H. We've always heard 300 H&Hs and 375 H&Hs. Yep. But, and the H&H, again, being Holland and Holland Company. So, uh, tell us more. Well, in 1885, H&H was awarded the patent for the Royal Ejector. And that was somebody that kicked somebody out of the palace? <laughs> <laughs> I am the no. Royal Ejector. No, this was their, their ejector system for their rifles and shotguns. Really? Yep. So, and that must have made them better than the others because the, now at this time you were talking black powder Correct. primarily. And in 1912, the 375 H and H Magnum was introduced. Really? And quite honestly, there's probably been no other cartridge that has been more versatile in the world of hunting. It's since. still. I mean, every time you see one, you drool. I got to keep up. Oh, I, I should have bought the one I saw years five ago. years ago. Yep. You you had a chance to buy. Was that a left-handed? Left-handed Browning in 375 H and H. Wow. What a stainless. gun. Stainless. What a gun. All right. Now. Here's a fun fact about H and H Magnum. All right, they have a round. There's a round out there called the 700 Nitro Express. Well, why don't you just go right to the top? Quite possibly, it's it's a .70 caliber. It's 70 caliber bullet. 70 of an inch. Imagine that, folks. That's a thick bullet. All right, it was created by H and H in 1988 because they already had a 600 Nitro Express out there, a .6 caliber bullet. Now. It, so when you're talking like a 50 caliber machine gun, this is a 60 caliber. Right. So a massive slug. These look like massive. small loaves of bread. These were these were like Twinkie sized rounds. Yes. <laughs> ready. So ready for any so African continent animal. In 1988, there was a 600 Nitro Express. Yes. Customer and I heard about that a lot. I actually was at a gun show in Detroit, and the guy had like six of the rounds laying on his table. He was selling them individually like for 25 bucks a piece. So which was cheap. Customer was not happy with the 600 Nitro Express and wanted something larger that would do the job. That's crazy. So what did he do? <laughs> he, he, <laughs> Holland and Holland created the 700 Nitro Express for this customer, and it was introduced basically in 1989. No kidding. So what rifles are actually made by Holland and Holland? Well, possibly their, their most famous rifle is going to be, it's called the Royal Double Barrel Rifle. It's chambered in many different calibers, but the main ones are... 240 H&H Magnum. I've never seen that one before. 7 millimeter Mauser. Yep, that's popular. 8 millimeter Mauser. Popular. 300 H&H. Again. 9.3 by 62R, which mm -hmm. is... A very popular European Euro round. It's a European round. It's very popular. 375 H&H Magnum. All right. 500 Nitro Express 3 inch. Because it's a 3 inch shell. <laughs> 577 Nitro Express. 600 Nitro Express and 700 Nitro Express. Now, they will make them in any special caliber you like. Uh, we had a post on our Facebook page, and everybody was asking for a 4570 yes. double rifle, yeah. which I think would be the American equivalent to... Uh, oh, to something, something low on this list. Very small on this yeah, list. Yeah, like the, about equivalent to an 8mm Mauser, only a little <laughs> more thump when it hits. Now, and these rifles are created in an amazing way where you can actually go to their shops... And they completely fit you for the rifle. You pick out the wood you want. You pick out what caliber. You pick out what s in full engraving you want on the gun. Now, just so that everybody understands, these are not sitting on the shelf. No, they are uh, custom-made I'll take for two you. of those. These yeah. are custom-made. 
prices on these new start at 105,000 euro. Uh-huh. That's wait, wait, wait. What? 105,000 euro. That's about one hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars. It's not like funny money, like Canadian dollars or something, right? No, this is this is one hundred and five thousand euro equals one hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars. That's the base price. That's where they start from. That's, that's like, where they start. That's like the the the. That might be the one in twenty-two Hornet. <laughs> All right. Now Holland and Holland has three stores across the world. They have one in London, and they actually have two in New York. One's called the New York Gun Room, and one's called the Dabuli Gun Room. And they're both in New York. Now, in the New York store, they have some rifles there that are used that have been, uh, oh, they're, they're used but are for sale. Okay? Yeah, people probably went broke. Right. Well, they have a Royal Deluxe double rifle in New York chambered in 470 Nitro Express. Mm. It has a complete full scroll engraving on the case color hardened receiver. Truly... Oh, they're works of art. These work are, of art. These are museum quality guns the moment they're, they're Tw- made. 25 inch barrel. It weighs 9 pounds, 15 ounces. <laughs> Price on this one is $160,000. You know, but think about it. It's a 470 Nitro Express. I, it's not like you'd buy it to go deer hunting in Michigan with, but what a gun. Whale hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Let that thing poke its head above uh, the water. If if uh, if if uh, Captain Quint had that, maybe the <laughs> maybe he might have lived through the first Jaws movie. Uh, the four sixty nitro express for a hundred and sixty thousand dollars. But wait, there's used, more. Used. That's, this is used. Okay. Used. Now they have another rifle in their New York gun room. Uh, this is another Royal Deluxe double rifle in 500 465 H and H Magnum. No, that's it, which it's, it's a 500 neck down the 465. Oh, okay, all right, okay. I was gonna say, what good's a double rifle if you got two different caliber <laughs> bullets in the two? The different right one's barrels. only for lions. Yeah. The left one's only for elephants. <laughs> Don't so pull them both; they're gonna a hurt. Three barreled rifle: one for lions, one for tigers, one for bears. Yeah. There you go. It's called the referees. Oh my! Call the rifle. Oh my! All right. So this rifle's in the. Uh, Large caliber as well. Now, this has an engraving showing an Indian elephant hunt on the receiver. Really? You've got a full elephant on the bottom side of the receiver, and you've got the hunters walking on the sides, and there's dogs, there's elephants. Just in case you forget what the gun's used for. Exactly. It has a picture of what it's used for. I don't know what to use this gun for. Well, it's it's engraved to hunt for elephants. Well, I guess I'll do that. What if they sell them by the pound? Now, well, you think it's about, what, (laughs) $20,000 a pound here. (laughs) Uh, it has 24-inch barrels, and it weighs 10 pounds, 9 ounces. You know, 24-inch barrels out of a rifle that large, that's pretty astounding. That bullet must get up and boogie. Well, it's must. a 465, so this is like a this is kind of like having a 4570 on steroids. And that's a good way to put it. Imagine a 50 caliber neck down the 4570, and then that's kind of the what we're looking at here. It's a neck down bullet. Okay. All right. Now, price on this one is a hefty two hundred and ten thousand dollars. And we're talking used gun. This is used at the New York Gun Room from so Holland and Holland. Is if anybody out there listening has been to the New York Gun Room, um, well, this is a shot in the dark. But if you have been to the New York Gun Room, give us a call right here in the studio eight one zero seven four three eight two five five or toll free eight six six five three three fifteen thirty. Personally. I've the only some of the nicer gun rooms I've been into have the most expensive guns I've seen have been under twenty thousand bucks. Well, and Holland Holland has kind of their own special way. Um, just their just the jackets, the Holland and Holland tweed shooting hunting jackets. What, remember what I told you the price was on those? No, it was high. Uh, I want to say it was twelve thousand dollars for the jacket. For the jacket. They have a Holland and Holland edition. Could I buy a pair of socks? Holland, yeah. <laughs> Holland, I hate to see the price of one of the ties. <laughs> Holland and Holland edition Range Rover. Oh, you're kidding me. Custom order, and it's to symbolize the union between two great British companies. Holland and Holland? Holland and Holland <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, Range Rover. And Range Rover. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. Yes, very, very, very interesting. I, I, I want everybody to, if you have the opportunity on your computer, look up Holland and Holland. Very interesting. Along You've been po- posting some sites on our website. I too. have. Along with, we're going to talk about some other guns when we come back from break. Literally amazing guns, just to look at. I mean, such works of art. Now, we, some we, people collect. You'll spend more than that on a on a Van Gogh. 
<laughs> you would. Yeah, people collect art. And I, man, these, will this van go? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, you, people is, collect uh, works of art. Oh, sure they do. For, and, for and much more than the price of these guns. And that's what these are for. These and when are you works of art. look at the metal work that's done to these rifles. The one of a kind. And the scrolling and the engraving and the complete amazing artwork that's done on this. You'll see why people pay this money for Completely them. handmade. Completely one of a kind. Yep. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They are absolutely phenomenal. So when we talk back, come back, we're going to be talking about another British company called James Purdy and Sons. Really? Yep. Okay. Looking forward to it, son. All right. Uh, this is the Gunsmith Show. John and Jake Smith will be back in just a minute with a lot more talking expensive guns today on the Gunsmith Show. Man's got to know his limitations. You just can't spend a whole day at the gun store anymore. Thankfully, the crew at Williams Gunsight Company has created the best way to spend the day at the gun store by doing it online. WilliamsGunsight.com is the way to shop for your used handguns, rifles, shotguns, and more with thousands of guns in stock for your total gun shopping experience. Check out WilliamsGunsight.com and find your perfect match today. Attorney Timothy J. Cassidy is the pro-gun attorney that we here at the Gunsmith Show use. With more than 20 years of experience as a prosecuting attorney, law professor, and holding a past seat on the Genesee County Gun Board, Tim Cassidy is your pro-gun attorney. Contact Attorney Cassidy today at 810-569-5441 or email him at attorneycassidy at gmail.com. If you want your home to feel sound when you are not around, call Pal Alarm. To protect your safe keepings and stop anyone from peeking, call Pal Alarm. When the house gets locked down so you can get out of town, call Pal Alarm. Give Pal Alarm a call today at 810-908-8298. That's 810-908-8298 or palalarm.com. And now back to the Gunsmith Show with John and Jake Smith. If you'd like to talk to John or Jake, call now, 810-743-8255. All right, we are back, and I hope you're having a good morning. Got that coffee filled up and ready to talk guns with us here this morning on the Gunsmith Show. I am John. And I am Jake. And uh, we're, we made sure of that. We double-checked this morning. And uh, it has been inside. a crazy morning, though. It really. has. Crazy morning. We've had a uh, uh, plethora of phone calls and and car emergencies and getting in here. The roads are a little slick this morning, so be careful. Uh, but other than that, we're doing great. Um, I hope you are too. It is a good weekend to be a gun owner in Michigan. We've got very cold temperatures. Lots of folks getting into reloading right now, and good time to go gun shopping. Jacob, I know we're going to be at the gun show in Davison tomorrow, and uh, we're excited about that. But yep. most of all. You want to talk now about expensive guns. And we're That's talking right. right now about the the James Purdy Company. So tell us more about that. All right. The rifles are called Purdy and Sons Rifles. They're made from England. Yeah. Made from England. They're made in England. It made in England, but you said from England. Made They're made in England. <laughs> in England for anybody that wants to buy them if anybody. they have a thick enough checkbook. You know, their side-by-side rifles have basically been unchanged since 1885. No kidding. It's been the same process, same the style, same styles. Handmade. Absolutely. Forged barrels. Hand forged barrels. That made, was what you were telling me Made last in night. the fire. They sh- there was a video of they pull the metal out of the fire and they start going at it with the hammers. And the old master craftsman making the yep. guns. And That's master craftsman's going to come into effect here in a little bit because I'm going to tell you about this first shotgun they have. Well, because they offer rifles, side by side rifles, bolt action rifles. Over and under shotguns and side by side shotguns, so they do cover the full effect here of rifles wow. and shotguns. So they're truly a custom arms maker. Then they are not just side by side rifles, but more. Now okay. in their shotguns, there's a couple different models, and they all have different names. But one of their rifles, it's called the Royal Presentation Side by Side in 28 gauge. Hmm. So this is a shy, side by side in 28 gauge. Beautiful gun, gentleman's gun. Absolutely, it was built in 1998. Weight is five pounds flat. No kidding. Yep. It has fixed factory chokes at light modified and improved modified. So they're actually choke tubes from the factory that will not come out of the rifle uh, will not come out of the shotgun. Hmm. Interesting. The stock it's the stock's actually called exhibition grade Chrissy and Walnut. 
You know, and it just amazes me to see it at five pounds. Right. That's just as a, they have modified that gun and made it as light as they possibly can and still be able to handle it. The uh, abs- Absolutely. I doubt Absol- if they've ever had a recall on their guns. <laughs> <laughs> now, the receiver is fully engraved. It has what they call banknote vignettes and the acanthus scrolling. All and get this. And this just kind of shows you how professional of a shotgun this is. All internal parts are gold washed for function and functionability. No kidding. That's like good electronic parts are gold washed. Right. They're very interesting. Well, you know it works as a great lubricant. Absolutely. It comes with a royal presentation case, which was a twenty one thousand euro upcharge at the time. <laughs> Or at the time, it was 21,000 what, pounds. What would a, what would a 21,000 uh, pound case, what would that well, what, what would it be, be made, made out of? of? Yes. Well, it's made of polished oak and elephant hide. Well, but of course. <laughs> ah, but of course. All accessories <laughs> in the case. Come with a little corner spot for some gray poupon <laughs> there. Is that what it comes with? <laughs> All accessories on the inside are either gold or made from horn. Wow. As in... That rhinoceros has a horn on its face. <laughs> horn. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So this is a 28-gauge side-by-side Royal Presentation Purdy and Sun shotgun. Now, the man who engraved it is called Simon. His name is Simon Cogan from England. He actually received the Queen's Coronation Award, which only a handful of skilled craftsmen have ever received. And this shotgun was one of the ones that were the reason... Why? why he got he received this award now this rifle this shotgun is actually still new and unfired from 1998 and the price on this one right now is hundred and ninety five thousand dollars no kidding one hundred and ninety five thousand dollars that's a that's a chunk of change but what a work of art but that's a small chunk compared to this next one tell me more now purdy also offers all of the large main calibers as well that H and H offers. Oh, so they they're into the elephant guns as well. They do. Okay, they do. Now this one is called the Purdy and Sons Deluxe Extra Finish. That's just the name of the rifle, the Deluxe Extra Finish. It is in five seventy seven Nitro Express. Has well, tw- just a massive round. It truly is a mass. If you've ever seen one, an evolved round from the black powder era. Yes, and and literally amazing. If you ever even just get a chance to see the brass, highly collectible piece of just brass, uh, take a peek. One of our comments on our Facebook page was how the 700 Nitro Express brass was last checked going 75 bucks a piece. <laughs> a yeah, piece. you don't see many of those you, laying around the range, do you? No. <laughs> the bullets, just They're the bullets handmade. are usually sold in boxes of five. Wow. Canucks. Yes, uh, that's the brand name. Not we're Woodley. not we're not saying anything bad about you Canadians. No, uh, Canucks is the name of the company Canuck. that makes them. K Y N O C H. Yeah. It's probably pronounced some other way, but that's how we say it here in Flint. So uh, now, so, all right. So fully scrolled and engraved rose receiver, twenty-five inch barrels with a premier Turkish walnut stock. You know, in the Turkish walnut stocks are those are those ones that are just phenomenal why Absolutely. why is why is turkish walnut such a good wood i don't know they are beautiful even even our good friend kevin wigton over at williams his his their premier rifle that he's built and it's it's usually in the case right now it's packed up it's not there but it, most of the time you can go in and see it it is turkish walnut it's packed up because they're they got it packed up in the i because i asked yesterday it's been shipped to vegas for the shot show so that they can show it off there Phenomenal pieces of Turkish walnut, though. Now, it also has an oak case with a canvas cover. This is a canvas wrap cover. Very African-looking. Okay. All the accessories are made out of bone. Has a large... And these rifles have these open V sights. Yes. Quick target acquisition. You said you can see the full tiger or, or lion as it's running at you. Yes. <laughs> Weight on this one is 12 pounds, 11 ounces. It's a hefty, hefty gun. It's a hefty Again, gun. Again, this one's sold by the pound, too, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that might be how they charge on these. It could be. Now, remember, this is in 577 Nitro Express. Two barrels. It's not just one barrel. You get two barrels so for this price. Think, yeah. This <laughs> comes with no ammunition. No. They don't throw in a box of shells? I'm going to let everybody guess on this one for about 10 seconds. Hmm. Once how, again. It's 12 pounds, 11 ounces. 
That's I'm, right. I'm not talking about the dollar figure. I'm talking about the dollar figure for a 12-pound, 11-ounce rifle. Should we pull a History Channel and just wait till we come back and tell you the answer? <laughs> Let's cross our arms and stare at the TV. All right. No, folks, price on this one is $225,000. Man. I, it, I've never fathomed spending that much money on a gun. But you know there's people out there that do. Otherwise, they wouldn't make them. A gun? People never fathom spending that much on a house. I, I, it seems to me you could probably... Of course, it's 30 pounds, not 12 pounds, 11 ounces. You could go out there with a Barrett, you know, 50 caliber semi-auto and do what this thing will do. Well, I would think so. Maybe there's some type of law Maybe they, against Barrett's because it's a military cartridge in Africa. Oh, could be. A lot of those countries, South, like South America, you cannot have a military cartridge. That's why 38 Supers are so popular down there. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting, and I appreciate this, because this has been a fun topic of conversation for, because you've been talking about doing this for like a year. Absolutely. And finally, I think I was heavily sedated, and he said, Dad, I, we're doing a show on. I, I just like the fact that that Purdy 28 gauge comes with an elephant hide lined box. <laughs> <laughs> elephant hide. Elephant hide. Well, you know, every now and then. You see stuff like this, and 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 I'll resort back to one of my one of the best gun experiences I've seen with seeing these high end guns, is uh, when we were at the Springfield uh, Museum. Absolutely. Now, and most of these shotguns, uh, I should say, a lot of the shotguns that you'll see on display are actually from the Robert Peterson collection. Yes, ex that's what I was going to say. From, from Peterson Publishing, from whether it be his Elephant Rifle, which I believe was in Seven Hundred Nitro Express. There no, 600. 600 Nitro Express because they had the shells on display yep. uh, as well. And they're massive. But they look whole, like the whole collection of his double rifles and every one fully engraved with whether it be a lion or a tiger or or, wa or Cape Buffalo. Yes. Cape Buffalo are, are what these are primarily used for, I would have to imagine, on an everyday basis now. No, what, but, but what was the, the gun that we looked at, and it was in the display case by itself. That was the 600 Nitro, I'm almost certain. But I don't remember which one it was, if it was a Purdy or if it was a it was, Holland and Holland um, for, for the Peterson collection. I know we've got pictures of it. I, I believe he had some from each. Just amazing. That, that man, now Peterson, if you ever heard of any of your gun magazines, almost all of them derive back to Peterson Publishing. And this man was phenomenal we could do a month's worth of shows about we peterson could. and uh just an amazing gun collector and gun enthusiast who brought the magazine collections to our fingertips uh to me as a child it was always peterson's you know uh his his control over the magazine industry it made a big difference to me as a kid you know before the internet uh, yes, I am that old. Uh, checking these things out, those magazines were what brought the gun world to life for me. Made me want to go to gun shows. Made me want to collect. Made me want to become a, you know, a, a, a connoisseur a bit of guns. Quick note about double rifles. What's that? In doing the research for this show, Ernest Hemingway had a Wesley Richards brand double rifle. Okay. He used it. It was his elephant gun. Sure. And all his other his African game guns. Built in 1913. Now, during World War II, he spent his time in Cuba. Yes. On his boat. He carried that on his boat. This is an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> he carried that rifle on his boat because of the reports of Nazi submarines between Cuba and Florida. Yes. And he says, his quote was, if it'll take down an elephant, there's no reason why it won't punch a good-sized hole in the side of that submarine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Ding, what was that? <laughs> and uh, the water starts pouring in. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine. Well, you know, i leave it to Ernest Hemingway to come up with a line like that. So when you we, you actually have put a picture on our Facebook page, I think, of him holding that gun. Or it might have been a shotgun. It was a shotgun. Oh, was it a shotgun? Okay. And we there was a, in, in the Springfield Sporting Arms Museum, again, some of his collection was there had, as well. But you also had the, the double rifles of so many of the famous hunters. You had Teddy Roosevelt's double rifle was there. Yes. Yes, uh, and it's and there is honestly just too many to ima remember every single one of them. We took a lot of pictures there, but there was so much to take in. 
Uh, we probably could have spent the whole day in that museum. Absolutely, and that was the Sporting Arms Museum. There are other museums de designated for uh, military weaponry, but this one is it was Sporting Arms. There was one collection of military arms over over the past couple hundred years, which was pretty amazing. Uh, but uh, more often, but than for not, these double rifles themselves, it's a pretty amazing. <laughs> Just to imagine what the power they have and, and the years that have been gone through, and they've remained basically unchanged because of how they work flawlessly. You know, I'm I'm happy to refinish a gun stock and make it look good, but to see the works <laughs> of art that these guys put together, uh, and and the craftsmanship it takes to to make them fit, where you can't even discern the line other than by color between the stock and the and the action of the gun, it's. Uh, just blows my mind well we got to go to commercial break folks this is the gunsmith show saturday morning and we are talking guns we're going to go to commercial break we'll be right back with a lot more show so hang on tight hey 